Hello, hello, and welcome to a little video about determining the better measure of center and spread for a data set. Now, in the last lesson, we did talk about different uh, measures of center, like the median and the mean. So the median talked about the literal middle of the data set. The mean talked about the average. So once again, let's talk about the mean. We, we had written down a sentence that we add the number of numbers, sorry, we add the numbers, and then divide by the number of numbers. And here's a very official math way of doing it. So this is in math language. In math language, the mean is represented with an X with a little line above it. I like to call it a little top hat. And what that means is we add the number of data values, so we add the numbers, then we divide it by the number of data values, so the number of numbers. Exactly what we did. And here's a little example of a little data set where we added 5, 10, 9, 7, and 5, and then we divided by 5. And we got an average, a mean, of 7.2. Now, the reason we need to think about what's better, the mean or the median, is because our data can be distributed in different ways. Let's take a look. There are three different ways our data can be distributed. One is called skewed right. This is when our mean is larger than our median. So our mean is greater than, why aren't we writing, my friend? There we go, is greater than our median. Okay, so the mean is more to the right. That's why it's called skewed right. Symmetric means the mean and the median are pretty much the same thing. Right? There's very little difference between them. Skewed left is when the mean is smaller than the median. So the mean is on the left side of the median. Um, a nice way of remembering it, if you see a data set leaning a certain way, it's skewed the opposite way. So if the data leans to the left, it's skewed right. If the data leans to the right, it's skewed left. If it's a nice hill shape, it's symmetric. Let's describe the data distribution of these sets. All right here, I'm going to trace the data distribution. There we go. It looks like I'm leaning to the left, which means I'm skewed right. I love abbreviating. Okay, now this is a box and whisker plot. Um, we have a median and this line. Remember that that's our median. So that means our data kind of goes like this. That's where our median is. It's on the right side. If our median is on the right side, well we've got to be skewed left. All right, let's talk about these two. I'm going to trace it again. It's easier for me to see. Beautiful. It looks like my data is leaning to the right. If it's leaning to the right, it's skewed left. In this one, again, I'm going to trace it. That looks like a nice little hill. So I'm going to say it's just symmetric. That's a nice short-ish word that I'm okay writing down. Ooh, hope you can read that. But it's symmetric. All right. Now, another thing that we have to use to understand our um, data is spread. And one of the spreads that we do is called inter interquartile range, or shortened to, excuse me, <laughs> oh, bless me, um, it is um, IQR. So the interquartile range measures how far the data is spread from the median. So how far away is the data from the center? All right. So the smaller the interquartile range, the closer together the data is to the median. The bigger the interquartile range, the further away the data is spread out from the median. So this is our measure of spread. Remember, measure of center is mean and median. Measure of spread is going to be interquartile range and the next thing we talk about. All right, let's calculate the interquartile range. Here we have a gym survey that surveyed its members about the average number of hours they spend at the gym each week. The data is recorded below. Let's find both the median and the IQR. All right, let's start with the median because we need to find the median first anyways to do IQR. I'm going to start off, I think I'm going to cross off two from each end. I did organize this data for you already. Ah, oh, beautiful. Our median is nine. We have a nice number in the middle which means um, I'm going to find Q1 and Q3 over um, without the 9. 
So the median exists. We don't use it for our quartiles. And we need Q1 and we need Q3. Okay, Q1. Let's cross off the numbers on the left-hand side to find the median. All right, we got two fives. Remember, if we have two numbers in the middle, what we do is we add them and divide by two. So here we have Q1 equal to five. Beautiful. Next, let's find uh, Q3. We're going to cross one off from one number off on each side. Got two 12s in the middle. So for Q3, we're going to add the two 12s, divide by two, which gives us 12. Okay, to find the IQR, we do Q3 minus Q1. So that's 12 minus 5. Our IQR is 7. And zoom out. Beautiful. Let's do that one more time. We have Coach Peterson's Middletown High School football team that's struggling to win games this season. He's trying to determine why his team has won only a few times this year. The table shows the points scored in games in 2016 and 2017. Compare the median and IQR, and uh, which year's scoring data should he choose to focus on. Explain your reasoning. Okay, so luckily these are organized in order, and they're side by side. So we can quite easily find the median and Q1 and Q3 for both of them at the same time. So let's start doing that. Um, okay, so I'm going to cross a number off on each side. I'm just using this extra space so I can see better. All right, it looks like our medians are right here. So our median is 24 for 2016 and for 2017. Okay, now let's find the IQR, which means Q1 minus Q, sorry, Q3 minus Q1. Oh, that would be backwards. Okay, so let's find Q1. So I'm using the top end because that's our, um, you know, our left-hand side, the smaller side. All right, it looks like this is where our uh, Q1 is located. Now let's find Q3. I forgot to cross this part off. Q3, same thing. I'm just going to go on the bottom. Here's Q3. All right. So that means for 2016, I'm going to be doing 28 minus 17. And um, for 2017, I'm doing 25 minus, oh, 17 as well. Right. Okay. So the IQR for 2016 is 11. I'm just going to write it down here because it's kind of it's kind of cramped. And for 2017, our IQR, IQR is 8. So who do we focus on? Well, I think he should focus on 2016. Now, the reason I think he should focus on 2016 is because the data is further away from the median. They scored a huge variety. They were less consistent. Um, for 2017, the IQR is smaller. That means the data was closer to the median. So I would say 2017's team was more consistent. 2016, we should focus on their team and the points scored, the games, etc. because their data was way more spread out from the median. And now I know you see that in 27, one game was scored zero, but the rest of the games were way more consistent. Okay? That's my reasoning. I hope that made sense to you. I'm not going to write that down because mm, my handwriting. I will have it down in the PDF of the notes that I will share on our Teams page. All right. The second spread of data that we talk about is standard deviation. Now, this looks crazy. And don't worry. I got you. But I'd still need to show you the formula. So here is the wonderful formula for standard deviation. Um, so the standard deviation represents how spread out the data is from the mean. So IQR has to do with the median. Standard deviation has to do with the mean. So center and spread kind of related to each other. Um, S is standard deviation. I know. Um, this looks crazy, right? Don't worry. We're going to be doing this with our calculators. So if you have your calculator on your computer or in person, let's, uh, let's write down how we find the median. For the median, we're in the calculator area. We will click menu, 
and then we type 633. We click our control button. We click the backwards parenthesis. I know I can't really write that very well. It kind of, you know what I mean. It's, it's supposed to be a parenthesis. And then remember to use commas between your numbers as you list them. Then you can click enter and you're good to go. So that's a shortcut for finding the mean. You're welcome. Next, here is a shortcut for finding the standard deviation. So that crazy formula. We also use menu. Then we type 637. Then we click our CTRL, our control button. Once again, we click the backwards parenthesis and we use commas to list our numbers. Then we click enter and there's a standard deviation. The great thing is about this in the calculator is if our data is out of order, doesn't matter. We just put it in as is. Now, this is going to take you a little bit longer than what I'm going to tell you because I already got the answers. Um, so in class or at home, practice doing those things with the numbers you see. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you what it is. I put in the following data into my calculator to find the mean, that's the X with a hat, and the standard deviation, the S. For mean, I clicked menu, 633, control parenthesis, I used commas, and I got about 56.29. I rounded it from 0.285. Standard deviation, I did the same thing, except I did menu 637. When I put that in, I got 3.45. If you got something else, check your data. If you got an error, make sure your commas are there, or make sure you didn't end with a comma. That happens sometimes. All right, same thing for number six. When I put it in my calculator, I didn't have to reorganize them. They are just as is, I put them in, and I got 56.63. I did round it from six to five. Standard deviation, I put into my calculator, and so did you in class, and we got 67.46, which I also rounded from four, five, nine. Same thing with number seven. You put it into your calculator, don't forget the decimals. Yes, they're there. That's okay. Um, I know it looks weird because in English, it's you don't have a period and a comma so close to each other in that order. But in math, you can. So don't forget your decimals. Don't forget your commas. For the mean, I got 4.89. I did round it from 0.887. And for standard deviation, why is my line so short? I'm going to make it a little longer. I got 6.07, and I rounded that up from 6.069. And that's it. That's it. Uh, so we talked about mean. We talked about median. Those are the measures of center. Standard deviation and IQR are measures of spread. Mean and standard deviation are related. The mean of the data set or I guess the mean of the, the center and the spread, so mean and standard deviation, they're related because the standard deviation is how spread out it is from the mean. IQR and the median are related. They're both center and spread that have to do with the median. If you have any questions, please make sure to ask me or your teachers. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day. Mm, bye!